hello viewers once more welcome to our youtube channel and in a series of videos we shall be presenting to you sepsis management remember from the definition of sepsis which said sepsis was organ dysfunction as a result of what lack of oxygen organ dysfunction as a result of lack of oxygen in the tissues so this series of tasks there are five in number five in number and they include oxygen administration if needed collecting blood and sending for analysis administration of intravenous antibiotics and controlling the source of the infection administering intravenous fluid and monitoring your your patient so this series of tasks if implemented appropriately will help to minimize tissue damage as a result of lack of oxygen it will also help to reduce the trauma the assault at the level of the cells by the by the substances that are released by bacteria or viruses and also by the substances that are released from our cells and our tissues that will subsequently damage our our own system so these these are the objectives of these interventions so when these interventions are performed successfully they will help to do what they will help to reduce the assault the damage caused at the level of our cells and our tissues by, by the substances that are released by bacteria fungi and and viruses and also by the substances that are released from our cells and our tissues in an attempt to, to fight the, the infection. That will subsequently do what? They will subsequently damage our own cells and our, and our tissues. So, this set of tasks can be performed by any clinician, wherever you are. They are simple and they are effective if performed within the, the first hour of sepsis diagnosis. Because when we perform them within the first hour of sepsis diagnosis, they will reduce death. They will reduce morbidity caused by, by sepsis. What we just need in order to be successful with these interventions is knowledge, the will, and, and the basic skills. Our basic skills, they are just paramount to be able to implement this task successfully equally worth mentioning is the fact that teamwork is paramount in achieving these objectives why is it paramount when we work as a team we help to administer appropriate antibiotics we help to do what to send the real blood targeted blood samples to the lab and we will help to administer appropriate antibiotics because with the help of experienced clinicians with the help of senior, senior clinicians we will help to do what to administer appropriate fluids to to our patients that is the the importance of working as a team that is the importance of teamwork when we are managing sepsis these interventions they are very crucial in, in sepsis management. Remember the difference between sepsis and, and an infection. Here we are managing sepsis and that is why we have this series of, of interventions. So, the first task in this series of interventions is oxygen administration if needed remember we have said the assault at the level of the cells and the tissues is partly because of what because of lack of oxygen so the first intervention the first intervention here is we have to administer oxygen to our patient to our septic patient if they do need the, the oxygen so now what happens is this if you take the saturation of the patient and the saturation of the patient is 
less than 92%. Ensure administering oxygen to your patient to have a target, a target of between 94% to 98%. So, our target when our patients have a saturation of less than 92% is to, is to have 94 to 98%. This is our target if we want to administer the oxygen today to our patients. Now, when you have a critically ill patient, a critically septic patient, and when we say a critically ill septic patient, we are referring to either a patient who is in shock, septic shock, or is unconscious. You make sure that you start, your starting point for oxygen administration should be 15 liters per, per minute. Your starting point should be 15 liters per, per minute. Now, if you have a septic patient who is not critically ill, meaning that who is not in shock or who is not unconscious, Administer just enough oxygen, just enough oxygen to have this target. So you administer just enough oxygen to have a target of 94 to 98%. So it can it can be within the range of what range of one to ten liters. It depends on the response of the of the patient. So but your target should be 94 to 98%. So now when we're talking of oxygen administration we should remember we should put at the back of our minds remember that in cardiovascular physiology oxygen delivery equals to oxygen content times the cardiac output so the oxygen that is delivered to our cells and our tissues is dependent on what or on what is contained in the blood multiplied by by our cardiac output now oxygen content is determined by what by oxygen that is attached to hemoglobin and the oxygen that is dissolved in plasma. It is important for us to note that oxygen that is attached to hemoglobin so oxygen that is delivered to our cells and our tissues is delivered in two forms we have the one that is attached in hemoglobin and the one that is attached to to plasma and what is attached to hemoglobin makes up 98 percent of oxygen delivery while only two percent is delivered dissolved in in our plasma so from a practical point of view what are we saying here if oxygen delivery is dependent on oxygen content and cardiac output, remember that the cardiac output is the amount of blood that is ejected from the heart in, in one minute. So, if oxygen delivery is dependent on oxygen content partly, it therefore means if we have less hemoglobin, oxygen delivery to our cells and our tissues is going to be, to be reduced. So, now, if we have enough inspired oxygen, enough inspired oxygen, what we take in, if we take in enough, we will possibly increase what? Increase what is attached to, to hemoglobin. And when we attach what is attached, uh, increase what is attached to hemoglobin, we will now increase what? The oxygen content. And if we increase the oxygen content, we will now increase what? What is delivered to the cells and the, and the tissues. So that is the reason why we should consider the level of hemoglobin and what is inspired. 
and that's why when the patient saturation is less than 92 percent we have to increase inspired oxygen such that we should be able to deliver just enough oxygen to the cells and the and the tissues that is why we are increasing the oxygen content so this is the this is the basis for our, our oxygen administration and remember when you have oxygen delivery at 98 percent or when you have oxygen saturation at 98 percent increasing the quantity of oxygen that you administer to your patient is not going to benefit the patient any longer so once you have this target there is no need administering any oxygen or increasing the the liters of oxygen that you are administering so now how do we administer the oxygen it's not just enough to say that this is what our target this is what we want but how do we administer the the oxygen so the first thing the first thing that we have to put at the back of our minds if you have a patient with a saturation of 85 to 92% consider using NASA prongs consider using your NASA canola and you can start oxygen administration at 1 to 4 liters per, per minute so if you have a, a patient who is saturating at 85 to 92 percent consider starting your oxygen administration at 1 to 4 liters per, per minute and with this 1 to 4 liters per minute you can use your NASA prongs you can use your NASA prongs but remember the commonest the commonest sources of oxygen that we have in our facilities is the oxygen concentrator maybe in our health centers integrated health centers in our clinics is the oxygen concentrator and the oxygen concentrator can only give us what one to six liters per, per minute so if you have a patient who is having 85 to 92 percent consider administering between one to six liters per, per minute in this case you can use your oxygen concentrator and you can use your nasa prongs to achieve the target of what of 94 to 98 percent now if you have a patient with an auto saturation of less than 85 percent consider administering oxygen from 6 to 10 liters per per minute and if you are administering oxygen from 6 to 10 liters per minute there is no way you are going to use the oxygen concentrator because the oxygen concentrator can only give you a maximum of what of six liters per per minute so here we should be thinking of other sources of of oxygen in our localities we mostly have what oxygen tanks oxygen cylinders and these oxygen cylinders can be able to deliver to up to what up to 15 liters per per minute so they can be able to deliver up to 15 liters per, per minute so consider using oxygen tanks because they can deliver from from six, six liters to 15 liters per minute and you can use what at this level you can use your your simple face face mask remember nasa canola if you like you increase if you are using a tank and increasing the oxygen inspired by from six liters to ten liters to your nasa cross okay is never going to change the inspired oxygen that you are giving today to the patient so if you are using your NASA cannula, the maximum liters per minute that you can administer is 6 liters per, per minute. Above 6 liters per minute, consider using your simple face mask. Because using your simple face mask is going to give more than 40% of inspired oxygen to your, to your patient. So this is basically what we have to do in administering oxygen today to our patients. Now how do you how do you regulate the dosage of oxygen being administered to our to our patients if you start administering 15 liters to the patient you wait for five minutes and after five minutes you begin to adjust either upward or or downward so what we are saying here if the patient is saturating at 98 percent after 15 liters of oxygen administration for five minutes consider downgrading it downgrading the 
the liters of oxygen that you are administering maybe you go down to 12 liters then monitor the patient for the next five minutes if the oxygen saturation is still within the target you down you downgrade it to what to possibly 10 liters per minute monitor for five minutes and you continue tapering down your oxygen administration so that the patient once the patient is stabilized you can now switch off the patient from from oxygen administration at the same time if your target is not rich and you started with possibly let's say five liters per minute your target is not rich what do you do you consider doing what upgrading to possibly seven liters per minute eight liters per minute nine liters per minute or ten liters per, per minute until your target has been has been reached so you monitor the patient for five minutes after each adjustment in your oxygen delivery so once your target is reached your patient is okay your patient is stabilized consider switching the patient off oxygen so this is oxygen administration which is an important task in septic patients management so dear viewers we hope you will gain much knowledge when it comes to sepsis management from our different videos so stay tuned stay updated because we'll have the next task to present in our subsequent videos stay blessed stay safe and have a wonderful day bye bye